What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the More Purpose Podcast. I'm your host, Clarence, and today we have the official replay of our first ever More Purpose Meetup, where we have the GOAT, my big brother, my mentor, Jalil C, and my other brother, Justin P, and they came with a whole bunch of gems where if you're watching this video, you cannot skip to the end, don't skip to the middle, you have to watch the whole thing because it's a lot of gems, and pull out your pen and notepad because I promise you, you will leave here with some value. So lock in, sit back, relax, and get ready to hear the best advice in the world. If you are an entrepreneur, this is the video for you. So we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Tune in. Y'all excited? Yeah! Y'all excited? Yeah! One more time, yo. Yeah! All right, tight, tight, tight. Right. <laughs> I mean? Hey, Ron. We good? Lock? How everybody feeling? Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's good to see everybody, bro. Grateful. Grateful. And before we get started, they had asked us what's one thing that we're looking to get out of this event. And I want to ask y'all, what's one thing that y'all looking to get out of this event? Yeah. Or one thing that y'all looking to pour out? Yeah. So for me, I, I just remember the place that I was in when I was 21, 22. And it just it hit me last night when we was all praying together. Mm -hmm. So I just want to be able to give clarity, give direction, give guidance, give wisdom, and talk about the things that I've been through so y'all don't have to experience that. Mm -hmm. So that's all I want to get from this is to be able to be a servant to you two gentlemen and a servant to everybody in here as yes, well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I echo the same sentiments. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am ready for... Who came here with an expectation from God? Yeah. Amen. Come on. Who on the internet is ready for an expectation from God? In the chat, I need to see you. I know yeah. I can't physically see you, but I need you to put your hand <laughs> in the chat right now. Right. Like, the expectation that I have from God is that all of your expectations are met. Mm -hmm. I said, God, wreck them completely. Mind, spirit, body, finances, mm -hmm. everything. And similarly what my brother Justin just said, the goal for us is to make sure that every single person who came here and every single person that's watching around the world, that God exceeds your expectations and helps you to be able to get the exact answer that you need right now based off of where you are. Yep. Because me and Justin sat in the same exact seat and we're in the same exact types of positions that each and every one of you guys are in or were in, whatever it is. So the attainability of what we can do and what we can show you of what's possible is present. And if you came with that expectation, and if you're watching with that expectation, I promise you God is about to meet it. Yes, Lord. It's a fact. Well, y'all know the intro. You got anything to say before you want to start, my boy? No, I'm good. Ron, we good? We live. Y'all good. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm happy to be here. Uh, welcome back to the More Purpose Podcast. <laughs> we talk everything from faith to finances. I'm your co-host, Marlon. You feel me? This is his intro, but I'm going to do it today. Oh, uh, and we're glad to be here. we happy to be here today. How y'all feeling? Y'all good. Y'all good. Y'all good. good. I went first to start off. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was trying to get that energy. My boy said, how y'all feeling? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first to start off, I think it would be good to um for you guys to just introduce yourselves and just tell them a little bit about yourself and what you do. Sure. And yeah, we can start off with you, Justin. Cool. So my name is Justin Phillips. I started a brand in 2018 called Support Black Colleges. So we made merchandise for all of the HBCU students. And um, from, the, from the day we did it, 2018 till 2023, we took it to $10 million in sales. Mm -hmm. And then I sold it. Mm -hmm. And then now I teach people how to start their own businesses yeah. as well. And we took that coaching business to $10 million in sales as well. Yes, sir. So I don't, I don't think they heard you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> So, 10 mil is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, I mean, we started with nothing. So we'll, I'm sure we'll get through all of that. Yeah. But, you know, that's a little bit about me. Um, would love to share any other wisdom that we got on the business side, finance side, because I know that's what we're doing, bridging the gap. So yes, that's sir. a little about me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so my name is Jaleel C. Can I do this real quick? Do, do you think, brother? Too, and you've done it a couple times. Can I get a yo? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> I was looking forward to doing that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, my name is Jaleel C. I'm the founder of North 13th. We are an edutainment media platform. We focus on storytelling to Gen Z and millennial minorities. Our goal is to empower all people to reach the highest levels of self-sufficiency and obtain the highest quality of life. 
uh, through the storytelling methods, which literally started from a vision and a basement at my grandmom's house, which is North 13th Street, uh, we were able to globally work with the biggest brands in the world, helping them to diversify their storytelling methods. We work with the likes of like Airbnb, uh, United Talent Agency, Sprite, um, Cadillac, uh man i'm trying to think of like youtube all youtube e, uh, uh all eyl the, you, earn your leisure anybody ever heard of earn your leisure before yes sir yes sir we've documented every single invest fest that you've ever seen since it started uh so i mean just honestly we've been able to do some really incredible things um and build a million dollar business from scratch from a basement um and so the goal is for all of you guys well, what i can't wait to share is the the power of storytelling and the power of being able to start in a small place and grow it to something that will go way beyond what you could ever imagine. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, we gotta clap it up for that. Yeah. <laughs> for y'all that's new, um, I'm Clarence. <laughs> <laughs> that's Marlon. Yes, sir. Cleanest person alive, as y'all can right. see. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm back. saying? <laughs> but I'm just so excited. I'm overwhelmed, not a lot of y'all, but. Um, it's just surreal to have not only all y'all here, but to have my brothers here as yeah. well. Like, they didn't have to fly here. Mm -hmm. They came all the way from Atlanta, flew in, did no charge, no nothing. Like, they really off, off the strength of just love and wanting to support and wanting to give back to everybody in here. And as y'all can see there, he a man of his word. He yeah. told y'all on the live, he said, yo, matter of fact, we're going to throw a workshop for y'all community. We're going to make it happen. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people will say that, and it don't happen. Mm -hmm. He right here in y'all face. Yeah. So... I want y'all to, throughout this whole day, it's about to be a powerful day. We got Bible study tonight as well. Mm -hmm. For those that want to stay and linger around, oh my Lord, that's going to be OD. Please don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to be crazy. <laughs> but, yeah, I want y'all to show them as much love as possible. We need that energy the whole day. If you got to get in the line, go ahead and get in the line. You feel me? Like, mm -hmm. We need all that energy today. But I want to get right into the conversation as well because we are on a schedule. So right. <laughs> my first question will be as far as what was – Y'all first start as far as like getting into entrepreneurship. What was your first realization of I want to be an entrepreneur? I want to start a business because there's a lot of people that's in here that are in that phase of I want to start a business, but I might I don't know how to start. I don't really think I'm capable, or mm -hmm. I have a business, but I don't know how to push it out to where it needs to get to where I see it to go. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think is yeah your way of where you realize like hey I want to be an entrepreneur yeah. and I want to change the you know what I'm saying the environment where I'm at. Yeah, so for me, it started younger. Um, I was selling candy in school, mm -hmm. and it was because uh, <laughs> I'm from Houston. So yeah. really southern, like Paul Wall, Slim Thug, wearing grills. Like, And I told my mom, I was like, I want a grill, like <laughs> bad. And then she was like, well, in this life, you got to work for the things that you want. Mm -hmm. And when she said that, I said, all right, cool. So I went to go get some candy from Costco, and then I started selling it. First day, I made $200, and then I went and bought a bs grill <laughs> and then uh, i got it and then the same day um somebody snitched on me that i was selling candy in school mm -hmm. so the principal called me into the office and she asked if i sold candy and then i was like no and then she was like well your best friend told us that you did oh. lying to me you crazy but she was lying you know how they put you in the first yeah. 48 and they be trying yeah. to tell you that your partner's <laughs> yeah. like, so I, i'm like bro i can't believe buddy just threw me under the bus like yeah. that crazy. whole time he didn't so then um, she dumped all of my candy out right in front of my face <laughs> and threw it all away, all in the trash. Um, but then from there, I just got, um, I realized that number one, I wanted to be an entrepreneur just because I, I enjoy business. And then number two, that if I wanted to create the life that I wanted for myself, then I had to do it on my own time and no one was going to come and save me. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I think that's where it all started. So just to answer the question, yeah. so it was, you know, yeah. like that, that's where it started. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, sir. What about you? So my journey started, um, honestly, similar with Justin. Like, I started selling candy in high school. I was undercutting the cafeteria. <laughs> I was doing sandwiches. I was doing <laughs> uh, candy. Like, I, literally, I had my boys come and help me, like, make the sandwiches and everything like that. And cafeteria was selling it for five. I was selling it for 250 Like, you know, <laughs> see me. Yeah. Like, um, and that was the, the, the whole journey was, like, I, I just was tired of asking my pop for money. Mm -hmm. Like, 
like there was one time we were going to hang out. Um, I would always go to North 13th, um, and and I don't say it just as the brand. Like it's, it's really my grandmom's house, so we we call it in the group chat North 13th, like literally. So we would always go to North 13th on Saturdays, and it started getting expensive to be able to do a weekend. I was asking my dad first for, all right, I need like 20 bucks for the weekend. Then it was turning into like I need 50, mm. and it was like, yo, I need a bean, like I need I need 100 dollars. <laughs> and he's like, yo, you need to get a job. <laughs> all he had to do was tell me that one time. I was like, oh no, I don't like this feeling. Right. So. Mm -hmm. The moment that I heard that, I was like, cool, let me start hustling. Let me try to find a way to create money. And so um, similarly to Justin, I went on that journey of just from that to just figuring it out, um, starting different like searches and journeys and study hall and high school. I was like, when, what can I do? And that's why I love the More Purpose platform. And I wanted to make sure I gave it back to you guys because what you have done is so incredible. Mm -hmm. Being able to mix faith and finances together, this is something that me and Justin were both looking for. Right. Like we did not have this. We did not have a go-to platform that was like, okay, this is where I can learn the information. This is what I, I was in study hall Googling how to be an entrepreneur. Right. Like mm -hmm. I didn't know. There was no YouTube like that for us in that time era. You know what I'm saying? I'm 28 years old. So like I was 2013 when I graduated, just to give you context. So we didn't have that. Now you all have this platform where you can just go here and just look at this episode and look at this episode. Okay, bet this is the blueprint of what I need to do. And so from there, um, it just kind of, and I guess we'll kind of keep going back and forth, but from there it just turned into, all right, what can I do with the skills that I've, given, I've been given? Mm -hmm. God has given each and every one of us a skill and a talent and ability. Whether you believe that about yourself or not is up to you to believe, but you've been given it. Now, your responsibility is to, and I love what Bishop Jake says, you have to look at the tree and be able to say, okay, what can I turn this tree into? Because mm -hmm. God does not make tables and chairs and, and different things like that. He only makes trees, but he plants the seed inside of you to be able to say, oh, I'm looking at this tree. All right, this is what I can turn it into. Mm -hmm. So I remember being in chemistry class drawing my like tables and my chairs, looking at the trees that I have. I'm like, well, I'm creative. I play the drums, I, I, I you know, play keys, I, I, I love fashion. Like, so what can I do? So I'm like, okay, well maybe I'll start a clothing brand. You know what I'm saying? That was my first thought of like, okay, well let's start this. And then I was like, well, you know what? I, I like creativity and storytelling, so let me get a camera. I don't really know much about what's going on with this camera, but let me start this journey of telling stories and doing videos. And they sucked in the beginning. They were so bad. They were terrible. Like, I wouldn't want none of y'all to see any of the videos that we started off with. Me and my best friend, Brandon. Like, we would just, like, create just for the sake of creating itself. And so through that trial and error and trial and error, that's where it led us to this point now. We'll, we'll go back and we'll start dissecting what happened. But the journey of and the pursuit was really I don't like depending on nobody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me find a way to be independent mm -hmm. and work with God with the skills that I feel like I've been given. Because I don't know all the way yet. I'm, I'm a little, a little uncertain, and I know that there's some people probably listening. That's like, ah, I'm a little uncertain of what exactly that thing is. Mm -hmm. But let me play with the elements, yeah. and then I'll turn into whatever it is God, God wants me to turn into yeah. later. That was good. Mm -hmm. um, it's this quote that I've heard. It says, "Whenever you want to exit somewhere or a season, your head has to go out first. Mm -hmm. So meaning, if you want to exit poverty, you're, it's a mindset shift first before anything happens. Mm -hmm. Your arm doesn't go out first, your legs don't go out first. It's a shift in your mind that happens. So what was that shift for you guys as far as mentally? Yeah, so for me it was really simple. I just looked at who I wanted to be like. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, what are, are these people doing that I'm not doing? Yeah. Because I realized that they it seemed like they had everything together. They had the mindset, they had the skill set, they had the tools, everything. And then I was like, all right, I remember like it was yesterday. I went on Google and I Googled, what does a CEO do? I just knew I wanted to be one. Yeah. And then the first thing that I saw was it said the average CEO reads 52 books a year. Jesus. And the average American reads one book a year. Yeah. And I was like, well, bare minimum, <laughs> if I want to be a CEO, I can at least start reading yeah. books. Mm -hmm. So then I, I didn't have any bread. Um, I, I, uh, I, I was on Instagram clicking through somebody's stories. That was an entrepreneur I followed. And he, uh, it was a book that he was uh, screenshotted. And it was called No Excuses by Brian Tracy. Mm -hmm. And it was $9. Mm -hmm. I bought that book and then from there I just dedicated myself I'm gonna just read a book a yeah. week at least because I feel like that'll shift my mind yeah and then when I read that book I just learned discipline I learned all of the things that come with entrepreneurship and then I realized that if I wanted to if I like 
the future is now. Mm -hmm. So I had to change my mind now to go to the place that I wanted to be because the things that you want to do, you have to become the person that's going to do them first. So you don't, you don't say, oh, I want to start reading books. You say, I want to become a reader. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you have to match the identity mm-hmm. of what That's a reader good. is. Yeah. So the first thing I and the way that you do that for me is you have to construct your habits around what a reader would do. Mm-hmm. But it's all about just getting started. bro. Yeah. That's the hardest part because mm-hmm. your environment. Mm-hmm. Right. And we we're in different environments where we can't we, you know, negative environments we come from a place of comfortability whatever it may be and then all i did bro was shifted a few things number one i had to shift my environment because that's the only thing we can control Mm -hmm. we can't even really control the friends that we have because we grow up in these areas and then we get zoned to specific schools so Mm -hmm. i don't even choose the friends i'm getting placed with these friends Mm -hmm. but i can craft my environment your environment can either empower you or it can not empower you (laughs) so um the biggest thing that i did with the mindset shift was i i changed my identity got you and i changed my identity into the type of person that i wanted to be that's big yeah i want to dive deeper into that actually okay on the environment because i know james clear talks about how we don't have to be a product of our environment Mm -hmm. and everything but what was the mental shift for y'all to realize that to be like i know i'm in this environment but this is where i was dealt I'm going to still play this hand and still try to win this game. I'm going to do what God gave yeah. me and handle and steward it the right way. So where where did y'all go to basically shift your mindsets in the way of, all right, I know this is my environment, but I want this for myself. This is what God has been oh, showing yeah. me. Yeah. So where was that click? I got a really good story on this one. <laughs> so I'm going to just go, please. So um, <laughs> when I was in Houston, I was living in a one-bedroom apartment by myself. Mm-hmm. And then one day I get a knock on my door. It's my family, my cousins, and then it's like three of them, four of them. They're like, hey, it's a lot going on in our house. Can we come and live with you? I'm like, yeah, sure, cool. So then I just remember one day I'm working a job. I go to my job. I come back home, and then it's like four people on the floor sleep. And then I'm sleeping on the floor. We sharing the floor together because mm-hmm. of so many people. And then I just realized my heart started getting real hot. And I was just like, bro, like, this is not what you're meant to do. This mm-hmm. is not the environment you're supposed to be in. But I didn't have a way to get out of it just yet. So I had to craft that environment. So I pulled all of my friends to the side and or my cousins. And I said, hey, look, this is what I see for myself. I don't have it all right now, mm-hmm. but I know that this is where I'm going. I remember it was May 1st. Mm-hmm. And then I said, it's May 1st right now. And by June 1st, this is what I'm about to be on. Mm-hmm. And if you're not on the same page, you got to get out of the house. Yeah, love. It just yeah. is what it is. I love y'all, but you have to. Mm-hmm. So then that was my physical environment. But then it's also your digital environment too, mm-hmm. hey, because we all and live in a place where we all on our phones a lot. So I had to clear and cleanse the digital environment as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, no more shade room, no more, you know, whatever it is. And we love those platforms, Mm -hmm. cool. Uh But I had to shift the, (laughs) I had to shift that as well. Um, Because, you know, there's a reason why they call it consuming content. You Mm -hmm. are what you eat. Yeah. You're consuming content, right? And what you, like my mentor always told me is like, what you tune into, you turn into. What entertains you, trains you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, so to answer your question, I had to shift the folks that were around me (laughs) and uh, and I had to realize that even if I am in this environment that I can um, that I can still craft it and Mm -hmm. either use going to get in get in line with the vision that I had for myself or you weren't. And Mm -hmm. if you weren't, then I was just going to have to go and do it myself. Yeah. 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 I I mean, what do we say after that? Right. (laughs) Bars bars and bombs. (laughs) Um, So. I think that the scripture is really true when it says that as a man thinketh in his heart, Mm -hmm. so is he or so is she. Mm -hmm. Hello, ladies. How y'all feeling today? (laughs) How y'all feeling online around the world? Um, So one of the things that I think is really, really, really important to know is that sometimes you can be really good seed, but you're just in the wrong soil. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Yeah. Let's run it back. I'm not stuck. I'm just letting that sizzle in your mind for a quick second. Let's let's rewind it. (laughs) Sometimes you can be the right seed, really good seed, but you're just in the wrong soil. Mm -hmm. So you're planted in the wrong environment. Mm -hmm. If you don't put a seed in the proper place for it to grow, it will die. Mm -hmm. With the potential left in it to be that plant or that tree or that fruit or whatever God had ordained for it to be. So what you have to do is to ask God, 
where can you position me so that I can be ex the ex full expression of what you created me to be? Yeah. How can I get the sunlight that I need? Yeah. How can I get the nutrients that I need? How can I get the water that I need? And so one of the things that I know for people who are listening to us right now is that you think that there's something wrong with you, but it's not something wrong with you. You were uniquely designed and created by God to be everything that he called you to be. The issue is that you're in the wrong environment. Mm -hmm. And the moment that you put yourself in a different environment, you will see God create the breakthrough that you've been waiting for or that you've been praying for. Mm -hmm. So stop judging yourself. Yeah. Stop criticizing yourself. Stop asking God, well, what's wrong with me? No, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just that you might not be in the right space for you to grow, yep. especially for some of you guys who have really been planted and you're literally having the deepest of deepest roots to you. And now the pot is not big enough for your roots to expand. Mm -hmm. Foundation, it is the key. Foundation, when I was building in the basement in Sicklerville, New Jersey at my parents' house, cause it's a combination with the story of North 13th and, and my grandma street, but really where it was built was in Sicklerville, New Jersey, in my parents' basement, right? And I give honor to my parents who are watching this. But, like, in that environment, I knew that God had global in my mind and God had global in my vision, but I also knew that great things start in small places. Mm -hmm. Walt Disney started in his uncle's garage. Mm -hmm. Steve Jobs started in his parents' garage. The, 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 the Twain brothers that literally uh, had, you know, the, the airplane. They started in, in a bicycle shop. Wait, what? Mm -hmm. how, how, do, how, how does an airplane start in a bicycle shop? Mm -hmm. Because in your mind, you can't ever see the place that you're in in this current moment as the final destination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is just the beginning's foundation for what will take you to the next place. Yeah. Do you think that Jesus ever criticized the fact that God allowed him to start as a carpenter? No. The son of God started as a carpenter. Think about that for a second, y'all. Go to Home Depot and look at the workers that, that, that are there and then equate that to being the son of God. Jeez. No. Go to Lowe's. Mm -hmm. wearing, the, wearing, the, wearing the vest, <laughs> the blue vest, in the back. All, all the noises <laughs> and all that stuff. Shout out to Ron. Ron is a genius. That's Ron, not, Ron built a platform. But like I seen the videos. Like I'm like, man, Ron. Ron went crazy. Imagine that in your mind, and then say, oh no, that person's gonna be the son of God, yeah. the change of the entire world as we know it. He understood that great things start in very peculiar and small places. Yeah. So to answer the question in the land, the plane. God will allow you to go through things in your life that develop and fine tune you to prepare you for the platform that he's going to create. Mm -hmm. Every single comedian always starts, Kevin Hart's, the Dave Chappelle's, all, they start in the brick and like the little local mm -hmm. comedy shops, work out the materials, the famous boxers, they're in small gyms that no one is around, no lights are around, no cameras are around, but what are they doing? Working out all the kinks in the mechanics so that when them lights come on, you're ready for that moment. Yeah. yeah. Hey, one thing I want to add to that, because we were talking about the seed, which is really good. One thing that I learned too was when you think about a seed and you think about like a tree that grows from it, what does a tree, a plant do? It literally does anything that it can to get to the sun, mm -hmm. to get to the nutrients. Mm -hmm. They shift, yeah. bend, yeah. do whatever yeah. they got to do to get to the sunlight that's giving them nutrients. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like for us? If we just planting ourselves in places that are shade, shady friends, people throwing shade at us, and then we trying to grow in that environment, it's impossible. So if you're trying to go somewhere, you're thinking about moving or whatever it may be, you might just be shifting yourself to the sunlight, and that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to add that real quick. And I want to go a little deeper. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I really want to go deeper into the environment because we gave a lot of, like, philosophical things, mm -hmm. but now let's get a little bit more tactical. Is that good? Can we do that? Yeah. 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 All right, because I don't want everybody coming here like, oh, my God. I felt so good. That was all oh, so inspirational. But then you don't go home with practicality to where you can apply it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of the cat. Hey, guess what? News flash for everybody, you know, who's here. No more gatekeeping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The strongholds are being broken 
for the demonic oppression that's holding God's people back from being able to go and get a bag. Yeah. 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 Come on. Mm-hmm. That's what we're here to do. Yeah. I'm sending a message out to the whole world. The sons of God and the daughters of God are now awake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, revel- the revelation that the Bible talks about, we've been waiting for the sons of God to reveal themselves, the earth groaning and travailing. Guess what? No, no more of that. The revelation is here now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The revolution is here now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're equipping y'all with the tools that you need so that we can go get this bag and go bring our Savior back and, and create the foundation for him to come back. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right? That's so good. I was in the basement of my parents' house, 2020, pandemic. I was broken, broken. I'd already been to the mountaintop when it comes to working and being among the biggest stars that you can name, like anyone. And I had been humbled by God because of my ego and my pride. I was brought to the lowest of lows. I was rejected from clients. I lost friendships, all types of things, because my ego was bigger than what my place of reverence was for God. And so God was like, no problem. I still love you, but you're going to need to send a time out for a second, Mm -hmm. like a good father would. Not because I want to punish you, because I want to make you think about what's going on so that you can understand you can't do this without me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You cannot do mm-hmm. this without me because your assignment, when you live your life by assignment, this is what happens. Your assignment is not designed for you to be able to do it yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see you down here for a purpose. I need you to get that done or go or, or I will be done with you. You will be you will be with the rest of those who will be lost souls for eternity. So I was humble. I go back home, I work out all of the mechanics in isolation. I hear this really strong for somebody that's listening to me right now. Your season of isolation is not a means for you to be in desperation. I'm not just trying to make Shun's word rhyme either. Think about what I said. Your season of isolation, when you're by yourself, when you're alone, when it's those moments where it's just you, your workout routine, your meal prep, your YouTube studies, your course studies, wherever it is that you're doing to become great, that what God wants you to manifest, like we're working on that, that isolation doesn't mean that you need to be in desperation. I'm desperate. I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what's going on. God forgot about me. Mm -hmm. I'm stuck. Yeah. No, it's isolation because you are being developed. So God placed me in that isolation place because he says, son, you're not ready. I know you think you are because you know what to do in those environments because I've given you charisma. I've given you natural charm. I've given you skill. I've given you all of these things. But you're not ready for that place because if I give it to you too soon, it will break you. And I love you so much. I don't want to see you broken. Mm -hmm. So he put me in the basement. So in that basement is when I relearned my relationship with God. I got more calibrated into the synchronicity with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I got rebaptized. Like it was all of these different things that the Lord was working out of my heart to be able to rid me of ego. And that's still a journey. Like I'm not going to cap with y'all. Like there's still progression that God is doing, but I'm telling you what that season meant specifically. Cause I don't want you to think that just cause you're in isolation season and then God allows you to start the big boom that everything's just sweet. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's why you need accountability. That's why this is my mm. brother. Mm. He gonna pull me to the side like, yo, you tripping, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You need that. So I'm sitting there in the basement. It's crisp. It's right after Christmas. I'm sobbing, y'all, on the floor with suicidal thought. Thinking to myself, yo, I don't know if I'm really gonna make it. Like I'm, I'm like, <laughs> y'all know there was cries when you like, <laughs> <laughs> like that, that draw, like that, that was where I was. That was where I was. I was on my knees, like convulsing. And if it was not for my brother coming down there, hearing the cries from upstairs, in the ba- uh, from upstairs and coming down to the basement, I don't know if I would be here with y'all. That's how real it was. So in that moment, God had uplifted me and he strengthened me. And he said, yo, I got you. I'm going to rebuild you. I'm going to work out these mechanics and uplift you. And so I was listening to Clubhouse during that time. And I was trying to just figure out in the business, like, yo, what am I, like, I going to do? Because we need to start like, 
adding another layer, another component to the business to start creating reoccurring revenue. Reoccurring revenue means consistent money. Mm -hmm. Like every month you can count on the sales coming in. And I hear this guy and his name is Justin P. And as I'm listening to him, I'm like, yo, this dude is giving game. Like this boy is going crazy. Like everybody else is on here for sound bites and for clout. But he was just night and day just pouring into the people, pouring into the people, pouring into the people. And I'm like, yo, I need to meet this dude. So a conference came up and it was in March. I had $3,000 to my name at the time. And it was a $2,500 investment for me to go to that uh, conference. Mm -hmm. I knew that if I could get around this man, I was going to be good because I had faith. If you want to grow, you have to sow. Mm. Come on. If you want to grow, you have to sow. You have to be willing to sow into the vision of what God has allowed for you. And you have to put your money where your mouth is. Why? Because it's not even your money to begin with. Right. Mm. Facts. Facts. You are a steward. So God is using the energy of money to put it in front of you so he can, okay, cool. You step, I'm a step. You step, I'm a step. So I sowed. And I wrote my intentions, like I told you guys to do last night. Before I got there, I will befriend Justin Phillips. I will ask him these specific questions to help me to figure out this. I was living in Sickleville, New Jersey at the time. Remember this, right? I got to that conference. I met Justin. He is now my best friend. In three months of me, move, uh, excuse me, of me going down there, I was living with him. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't think I don't think you like I I was broke. I was suicidal in that December. By March I meet Justin. By June or July I'm roommates with him. Mm. By January I'm business partners with him. Mm. That's not Jaleel. That's God. Mm -hmm. Because I knew that I was too like God had placed me in the isolation, but the skill set was too great for Sicklerville. <laughs> so he said, your roots have been expanded. Why? Because, listen to what I just said. The roots have been expanded. Yeah, yeah. Does anybody see roots? No. No. Mm -hmm. The basement was where he grew the roots. Mm -hmm. Now they're too big for Sickleville. Mm -hmm. So I need you to go to Atlanta. I sowed into the vision of where I knew God was going to do. I meet this man. My entire life changes. I meet Earn Your Leisure within two months of me being in Atlanta. I meet them literally because they needed help documenting uh, Shaq for a podcast that they were about to go on. My media team was there representing my mentor and my big brother who introduced me to them, Nehemiah Davis. And through that, we were filming them for that. We did a recap video for them. Two weeks later, I get a call from Rashad. He's like, Hey, man, that was incredible. Like, we love working with y'all. I got this idea in my head, man. It's called Invest Fest. I think it's going to be really big. I'm like, yes. <laughs> it, and instantly. Like, I'm like, Invest Fest, it doesn't exist. I'm all about making history and doing things that nobody's done, disrupting the industry. So then, literally in two weeks, I'm in New York with my crew. We're documenting Invest Fest. Like, telling the story of the lead up and the promotion, creating the look and feel, like getting into it with them. Two weeks after that, I'm in Jamaica with them with Usain Bolt. <laughs> the roots were planted in Sicklerville, the forest that's now growing mm -hmm. is because of what that was. So I want all of you guys to take that in because God will do things behind the scenes that will then be showcased to the world. Yeah. But if you don't properly steward that behind the scenes moment and that underground moment, you will forfeit your calling. Yeah, that, that was crazy. I wanna go back to what you wrote down before you met Justin and just the words you put into the atmosphere. Um, I the thing to do. <laughs> you got it. Cause um, a couple of weeks ago, the Holy Spirit was dealing with me on something and I was just looking around. You know how sometimes you can look around while you're in your waiting season. You're like, all right, God, like, listen, I'm waiting right here. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're not, you're not jealous. You're not comparing yourself and all like that. But you're just looking like, all right, when, when's my time? You know. Mm -hmm. And something the Holy Spirit was dealing with me on is that 
a lot of people that have these things and that are walking into purpose and destiny, they have it because they are working in the principle of their authority and the dominion of speaking things and speaking his word. And God was basically telling me, like, you don't have it because I gave you the promise, but you're not speaking back what I said. Yeah. yeah so I was it's so crazy because a couple of days ago, a couple of days ago, I was picking up a DoorDash order in Chick-fil-A, picking up a DoorDash order. And I'm sitting I'm standing there. Chick-fil-A is usually is usually quick. It's usually quick. So I'm just standing there. It got to about 10 minutes. I'm like, listen, all right, what's going on? So I was like, I'm going to give him a couple more minutes. So I, the lady was like, what's your order name? I'm like, Marlon. And she was like, oh, your order been ready 20 minutes ago. I was like, hold on. So I stopped. <laughs> I stopped. And I just thought about it with us. I was like, how many times does God, he's ready to bless us and ready to give us things. But because we haven't really said anything or because we haven't spoke what he already yeah. spoken over us, that we're just waiting, looking like we're waiting on him. Right. The order's been ready. Right. You know? So... So and that's good. that's kind of what I felt I, like. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, dang. In that moment, I was like, oh God, you just you yelling right. at me. You yelling at me. So I just like that you said that you wrote out exactly yeah. what you uh, wanted to do with Justin, yeah. and then just speaking it into the atmosphere also. Hey. And we're not talking about that new age manifestation either. Speaking what God said. Yes. Right. Period. Hey, real quick before you do that, I want to talk about what your dad said on Bible study last week because he, bro, it, it shook me. It was crazy because he was like, same thing you're saying, Marlon. He was like. God's promises are voice activated. Yeah. And he said, how many times have you prayed just one time and then given up on it? Yeah. But then you just needed to come and say it back to him one yeah. more time. Mm -hmm. So then he made us do a reflection and reflect on how many things did we get promised that we probably let go of because we didn't revisit. A lot. And I was like, dog, yeah. just thinking about how much I let go. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, great point. Go let's, ahead, let's just go here. In the beginning was the what? The word. word. <laughs> yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. <laughs> it's that simple. It's that simple. In the beginning was the word. And then what? And the word what? Was God. And the word was? With God. With God. Simple. Words. Words. It's <laughs> crazy. Dude, watch this. Whenever Jesus did a miracle, did he just lay hands and walk away? He spoke. When the raging seas were going crazy and the disciples come and wake him up because he was asleep. I could, oh, I could go in on that. But <laughs> he was asleep. He, he got up. Did he just wave his hand and then go back to sleep? What did he do? Peace. He said, peace, peace. 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 be yeah. still. Yeah. And then he went back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That don't give permission for y'all who be hitting the snooze button. Y'all talk about some. I gotta go to work, but peace be still. No, we we ain't doing that. But the 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 word was God. The word was with God. Yeah. So we are made in God's image, and we are made in God's likeness. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So that means that whenever we want to manifest His will for our lives, yeah. not our will for our lives. Emphasis. Mm -hmm. I want to say that one more time, especially for everybody that's listening to us on the internet, because you're getting confused. People out here doing manifestation yeah. courses, nah, telling nah, y'all nah. to sage y'all cribs, get them crystals and all of this, like all of this extra stuff. <laughs> God don't even need all that. Yeah. <laughs> God will accelerate you in rooms and places that you don't even think that you belong just because you are obedient. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, I, 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 there's so much I want to say. Okay, so the words that we speak, this is a cadence I want you to write down. Y'all ready for this? This is game. This is game. This is good. This is really good, good, good game. Y'all ready for this? Yeah. All right, if you're, if you're taking notes and you're watching this after the fact, pull out your notes right now, go on Google Docs, save it in a place where you're going to always be able to look at it. The things that we think leads to the things that we say. The things that we say that leads to the things that we do. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. The things that we think that leads to the things that we say. The things that we say that leads to the things that we do. The things that we do that leads to the habits that we form. And the habits that we form, that leads to the lifestyle that's around us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody send me that, please. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do it one more time so you can make sure that you got it right.
The things that we think that leads to the things that we say. The things that we say that leads to the things that we do. Mm -hmm. The things that we do leads to the habits that we form. And the habits that we form leads to the lifestyle that's around us. So, if you look at your current bank account right now, it is a direct reflection Uh, (laughs) of the lifestyle choices that you currently have. The lifestyle choices that you currently have are as a result of the fact that you have bad habits, Mm -hmm. irresponsibilities with finances, inconsistencies with the way that you're spending your time. Those habits are then formed because the things that you do every single day are implementing these bad habits. Mm -hmm. That is as a result of the things that you say about yourself. I'm broke. Mm -hmm. I am is a direct correlation of your Mm self-identity. I am broke. So guess what? I'm doing broke things. Yeah. Creating broke habits, Mm -hmm. creating a broke lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But why am I saying I'm broke? Because in my mind, I think that I am broke because I've seen those habits formed in front of me by my parents or by my guardians, or by my loved ones, or by my boyfriend, or by my girlfriend, or whatever it is, whatever that applies to for you. So all of these things are sequential steps, all deriving from one thing. What? How we think. Yeah. How we think. So if you want to change the lifestyle, you have to change what? How you think. think. Mm -hmm. So that now that changes these corresponding sequential activities i actually heard it in a different way too um the way i heard the way i, way I think about it and i heard it is like the thing the way that what you think about what you think about dictates the way that you feel the way that you feel dictates the way that you act mm. the way that you act is your personality wow. and your personality is your personal reality so you can change your personal reality just by shifting the way that you mm-hmm. think yeah you know um, Jalil, he wanted you to show, tell him. Uh, yes, oh, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, go ahead, Look, That's that. going to keep happening. I'm with, are, we, are we feeling good right yeah. now, y'all? Yeah. Or is this good? Are y'all feeling this? Yes, yeah. I'm soaking in game, boy. So, <laughs> where do I start? Because you know this one is crazy. Um, all right. Let's talk about intentions. I said, intent, mind you, okay, so th- just so you know that this is no cap, I wish we had a camera uh, that I could put on this. Just so, all right, look. Actually, let me do it this way. Because I, I, I love receipts. Ready? Y'all can't really see this, but May, what does it say? You tell me. May 15th, 2021. So we call no cap on a play. Y'all know if you start going in your notes section and, and mess around with stuff, it, it changed the date. The date. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> Just so we're, we're, we're now verified. We're receipts. We got it. Okay? <laughs> now here we go. I say, what are my intentions for this conference? Well, what do I want from this conference? To befriend Justin, some other people that will remain nameless, and lead with their personal respect and the beginning of friendship. To gain greater understanding of how to go about the start of an e-book, that, that, that time I was writing one. To gain clarity surrounding what the proper focus point of the business should be from a retail standpoint. What do I want them to walk away thinking of me? He's kind. He's energetic. He's passionate. He's fly. (laughs) That's a fact. (laughs) What else did I say? Weaknesses. I identified all the weaknesses that I felt was happening currently in the business at that time. Clarity on direction for the business was a weakness. The focus point of what the model of the business was. Time management. Personally, what are the weaknesses that I have? The more honest that you can be with the things that you don't feel good about is the better that you can be at solving those issues and then creating a new reality for yourself. The deeper that you can be real and honest with what you're going through and the deficiencies that you have is the space that the Holy Spirit can then say, thank you. You're finally stopping leaning on your own understanding. Yeah. Let me come in and handle that for you. And you work in tandem with God so that he can help you co-create the reality in which he has already designed for you. 
because you're walking in more purpose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Ron, clip that up. <laughs> <laughs> now, time management, focus, right? I went into what do I want to focus on? I had questions for every single speaker on what the subject was that I wanted to talk about. Intentional. Intentionally. Uh, and then there were some bonuses that, that were down here from some other personnel. The main gist of what we're talking about is when you're living a life of more purpose, that means that you're living a life of intentionality. Mm-hmm. So things don't happen to you, you design them. Mm-hmm. In co-creation with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That is the key. Not you take the reins, because I promise you, when you drive, you will get nowhere fast. Mm-hmm. But when you let the Holy Spirit drive, you will get way beyond what you even thought possible and where you yeah. think you could go. I wanted to tap into um, the obedience aspect because that's something that plays a major part in our lives and all of us of how we get to where we are today. But when we filmed with Mike Todd at the end, he had told us, he was like, what God showed me for y'all is what more purpose is going to come, more obedience. And also, in my eyes, more purpose is going to come with more faith because it's a lot of people that's in here that knows that God's calling them to do something, but they don't have the faith level to match what God's calling them to do. Uh So God will be like, yo, I need you to come do this. But in your mind, you're looking like, well, I'm not good at speaking. I'm not called to be in front of a camera. I don't like how I dress. I don't think I can do this. Right. But in reality, God's already qualifying us right then and there. If yeah. he calls to do it, that means you already have everything you need right, right there in that moment. Right. Mm-hmm. So I want to tap into the obedience aspect because I only know y'all through obedience, yeah. through right. listening to God's voice and taking my leaps of faith. So faith and obedience hand in hand. Right. Yeah. Please tell them about last night. And what you were reflecting on, and then that moment in the parking oh, yeah. lot for you. Oh yeah, okay. that's that's the story for this moment. For okay, sure. so last night when we were here, we was all praying, touching every single chair to make sure that everybody gets what they need from mm-hmm. this talk. At one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. One o'clock in the morning. No, cap. we we no, we were here. Yeah. We were all here. No cap. Yeah, and bro, I just started. I was just praying, and then I just started crying, bro, because. I was just thinking about where I was at at 21, at 20, at 22, and I was just in a bad place, like doing everything negative that you could think of, bro, mm-hmm. everything. And then one day I walked into, I was in a parking lot and it looked a lot like the parking lot out here. Yeah. And I just fell on my knees. I said, bro, God, bro, like I tried it my way. <laughs> I really did. Yeah. So I'm just going to do whatever you tell me to do now because my way clearly doesn't work because it got me here and I do not like this feeling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then I started to think about, you know, where all of you might be. And then that's when I started crying because I was like, bro, I can only imagine how these folks feel and what they need to hear. Yeah. So, you know, after that moment, I actually got a job. <laughs> and I'm just giving y'all the tactical transition because just because you feel that you got the information, the knowledge, the tactics or whatever to mm-hmm. call from God don't mean that you're going to feel comfortable to act yeah. on it mm-hmm. immediately. And I didn't either. So what I ended up doing was I got a job and I was working this job and I very quickly realized that I am not a good employee. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, OK, I need to be doing this for myself. But how am I going to use my job to be able to get to the purpose that I have Mm -hmm. and that I see for myself? Mm -hmm. So what I started to do was I live massively below my means, didn't buy anything stupid. I'm talking about eating nothing like Mm -hmm. Chipotle every day, seven dollars and 47 cents when I was doing every day, one burrito a day. (laughs) (laughs) And my friends moved in with me, my my cousins. So now I'm splitting a seven, eight hundred dollar rent with three people. Mm. I'm spending two, three hundred dollars a month to just live. And then I got a job. I'm stacking up two, three thousand, four thousand dollars a month, whatever it was at the time. And then from there, I saved up for six months, eight months. And then now I'm like, OK, cool. I got like ten thousand dollars, you know, saved up. And then um, my boy calls me up. He says, Hey, Justin, man, I think I got a good idea, man. I really want you to be a part of this. Just move to Atlanta and let's do it. Mm -hmm. And it would have been great if the story was, I said, yeah, Yeah. and then I went immediately. That's not what happened. I kept doing the things I was doing negatively because I was making fast money. So then I said, "So," but then God sat me down and then just flipped the whole script and was like, Mm -hmm. bro, you either are going to go and do this or you gonna be in damnation. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, all right, that's yeah. like what I felt and what I heard. So I just moved to Atlanta. And when I moved Wait, to- Wait, can you tell them about what you heard in the car? Yeah, well, that's what I'm about to say okay, now. Right, right. So, I, I'm sorry, I love this story, so <laughs> I don't want y'all to miss none of the details. So 
I moved. <laughs> I moved to Atlanta. I pack up all of my stuff in a Nissan Altima, uh, 2013 yeah. silver. Shout out Nissan. You know, so you shout out to Nissan Altima. Packed up everything, and I'm driving 12 hour drive from Houston to Atlanta. And then about like hour six, um, it was Wednesday. So I, I'm from Houston. So we went to a church, Joel Osteen, mm, where they do yeah. Wednesday Bible study at Lakewood. So I'm listening to it. And then on the Bible study, right when I turned it on, he's like, you know, if you're thinking about traveling, if you're thinking about moving, if you're thinking about going to a different place, God will take you to the other side if you just meet him in the middle. Like, meet him in the middle. So if you're thinking about moving to a different destination, you have to meet him in the middle so he can pull you to the other side. But if you never go to the middle, he can't take you to the other destination. Nah, so and it was right when I was in the middle For from real. Atlanta or you Houston to Atlanta. Yeah, like I just clicked on it right wow. when it turned on. Yeah. And I was like, bro, it's crazy. So then that's it just crazy. it confirmed. <laughs> So then I moved to Atlanta, and then that's when I started the business because mm -hmm. I had $10,000 saved up. We went in. My um, my boy, he had already bought inventory. He had $20,000 in inventory. He said, Justin, I got $20,000 in inventory. Send me $10,000, and we're 50-50 business partners. Mm -hmm. I had $10,000 $10, and two oh, pennies wow. in my bank account. Wow. And so I sent it to him, wired it straight to him. You got to act fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Act mm -hmm. now, figure it out later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I sent it to him and then immediately had two pennies left in my bank account and I went in my room and then I started crying. Yeah. Fell on my knees, yeah. started crying. I'm like, hey, look, I'm out here mm -hmm. for real. Yeah. Yeah. God, listen. Believing. Yeah. yeah. And um, that night, um, I started a I started a business where I was helping people like grow their Instagram accounts. Mm -hmm. Within a couple of days, I had made like maybe like six hundred dollars, like you know something mm -hmm. something something light. And then rent was coming up, and rent was eight hundred. Oh. I had six hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell my new business partner, new friend, I ain't got no money. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just praying. And then I get a text message, and my boy he texts me. He was like, "Man, I know that you just moved to Atlanta. I really just wanted to bless you. You sent me two hundred dollars." <laughs> crazy yeah he sent me 200 so i had 800 to pay the rent and then from that day i locked in on the vision that that you know god gave me yeah. and within the next 90 days this is like the tactical information 90 days straight i just focused on the three things that made money in the business so if you got a business right now hmm. Remove everything else that you're trying to do. Write down all of the 25 things that you want to do in business and then look at the top three, circle those, and then eliminate everything else. Mm -hmm. And then I did only those three things for the next 90 days. And within the first 30 days, I went from $0 in income to $5,000 a month. Wow. Just focusing on those things. And then I was out of scarcity mode. Mm -hmm. So now one more thing I want to talk about to how I got to Atlanta was the job part because I know a lot of people have a job trying to figure out how to get out of it. So working my job, living below my means, splitting the rent, et cetera. And um, what I ended up doing was I asked my job, I was like, hey, look, um, I started my side business and I'm making like five, six, seven hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. in the side income, but not enough to quit, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm still relying on them. So then I tell them, I'm like, hey, look, y'all, you think I could just work from home for one day mm -hmm. and I'll take less pay, but I'll do the same job. And then they was like, cool. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. So then that day, I could knock my work out in half the work day mm -hmm. and then work on my business the rest of the other yeah. day. Then my business started growing a little bit. Then I hit them again. I'm like, can I work from home two days? Mm -hmm. I'll take less pay, but I'll still do the same job. Yeah. They was like, cool. And I got all the way down to I had one day at the job, but my business was now supplementing my income because I was able mm -hmm. to spend time and grow it and then comfortably make the switch from job to yeah. doing my business. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, when my uh, business supplemented my job income, I just quit my job. Yeah. And then I was in a good place to have that money saved up and then go and you know move to Atlanta and do my thing. That's good. So, and that's, that's very it's very practical also yeah. because I found myself in a space where it's like, okay, I'm believing God. I'm believing God. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna just quit my job, but I didn't do all the practical things, you know. Right. Just quit my job, no finances, and I feel like that's a a place where a lot of people might be. Realistically, it's like, okay, God, I don't want to be at this job, and God's probably looking at all of us. It's like, okay, what are you doing now to to venture off? Because like He said, He had He had a system in place. He had everything planned out. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. This is the plan. This is what I'm gonna save up and stuff like that. So yeah. to whoever may need that, if you are looking to make that transition, start now. Yeah, and yeah. use your job. Yeah use it get them they got a corporate structure that's there look at what they doing and then apply it in your own personal life and then you can use that to make the transition from not having to rely on it to doing what you do in your own business i want to tap into that i just want to tap into that real quick because bro 
I had told Marlon this. He he witnessed it firsthand. Cause I used to work at Chick Fil A, mm-hmm. and even that though makes I worked at so Ch- much sense. bro, <laughs> you were probably the star employee <laughs> oh at Chick Fil A. No, like honestly, how many of you guys can see Clarence like at <laughs> like that is the most perfect role. My, my pleasure that could ever be <laughs> given <laughs> on the spot, instant hire. Yes, <laughs> yes. Clarence, wait, okay, I gotta go in this one. You ever see the uh, the clip of the uh, Chick Fil A employee that like ran down the block yeah. to be like, <laughs> That's CL all day and night. You left like your 10, sauce. You, you missed your sauce. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, bro, like, oh my God. I used to work at Chick fil A, and I told the story before, but I'm going to say it again. So, working at Chick fil A was basically, that was my sign of I'm not meant to be, as, be an employee either. Like, that was cut. As soon as, first day, I said, My dad, listen, I'm, I'm quitting. See, so you're not quitting nothing. Go back to work. So, all right. Cool. <laughs> So while I'm working and everything, I don't want to work there, but I realize I, I can't leave this job until photography starts paying me more. So but a lot of people will jump the gun because they'll be like, I don't like this job. I'm going to quit and go where I want to do. But you over here jumping the gun because now you don't have no finances to even fund what you want to do. Yes. So now you look dumb. Right. <laughs> now you're jumping the gun. So you over here trying to do this business, but where's the money coming from? You're not utilizing what guys already placed you to have to fund the business you have. So... I started using Chick-fil-A money, started buying my cameras, started buying the lights, started paying the rent and everything, whatever we had to do to trap out my garage. Right. And while I was doing that, I didn't realize I was learning unintentional skills yep. that I was going to start implementing into the photography business. Yeah. So the, the, them making us say my pleasure every time, them making us like, acknowledge every customer need, all the customer satisfaction, everything like that, I'm taking that stuff I'm learning from them and putting it into my business. So now every time somebody walk in my building, Hey, how you doing? Coming in with energy, like making sure they good. What music you want to listen to? How was your day? How was your drive? Like start a conversation to make them feel more welcome, more comfortable. Little things that you don't realize that you'll learn from your corporate job can actually 10x your business of what you actually want to do in entrepreneurship. Right. So for those that's looking to quit their job or jump the gun, do not jump the gun because I'm trying to tell you it's the reason why you're at that job right now because that job is what's going to actually help build yeah. what you're called to do and your purpose of what you had to do. I'm not trying to throw Marlon's business out there. Good. But I tried to I tried to tell Marlon that before he had quit one of his jobs. Yeah. He had a corporate job. And with that job, he was like, hey, listen, I don't want to work here. That's not it. That money was sweet too. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I feel you, but do not quit that job until your plan B turns into the plan A. Mm-hmm. Like, you want to leave this job, but you, you need that money too to fund everything you want to do. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I hear you. I feel you. I feel you. Listen, I feel you. But forget all that. I'm leaving the job. <laughs> But now he looked back on it, he looking like, nah, I should have kept the job because the favor that guy allowed him to have, nah, I'm not going to lie, you won't be supposed to have that type of money, but nah, 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 crazy looking back on it. Yeah. Matter of fact, tell them how you walked in there and got a raise out the gate without even working. Yeah, so I got a, it. I had got a job interview at this place called Conduent. Uh, you might see it near Greenbrier. And I was the youngest person at the job. I was making, so it started off, I, I actually was in Jersey, I think. I was in Jersey. And they called me. I was like, hey, is our interview still on when I get back to Virginia and stuff like that? It was like, yeah, we got you at a base pay of, like, they already gave me the job, but they still wanted to interview me. Okay. Like, your base pay is going to be 1750 So I was like, okay, I'm going to do my interview when I get back. Got back home, walk into the interview, got the job on the spot. She said she liked all of my responses. Uh, I don't know if any of y'all prepare for interviews, but I was like, Holy Spirit, listen, just give me whatever you want me to say. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what kind of questions they're going to ask, but I'm just, I'm a ball, you know what I'm saying? So I went in there, was just chatting it up, and... I was like, yeah, uh, we want to move you to this uh, this department. We're gonna give you twenty two fifty, and I was sure. yeah, I was twenty years old at the time, but I didn't like the job. Right. I really didn't like. I didn't like the work. But what I will say is that, again, I was calling it stepping out on faith, quitting the job. But God gave us the ability to have faith, but also common sense. Mm-hmm. So I feel like a lot of times we we'll mm-hmm. say we're stepping out on faith, but don't look at okay. Cause I know faith is that. Um, the evidence of things not seen, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, yes, sometimes it won't make sense, but he still wants you to do the practical steps. You know what I'm saying? And watch this. So I want to tap into that, and then I also want to tap into the fact that sometimes you have to go, like you said, you have to go through the dirt to get your character development yeah. and everything. Right. You have to go through the laughs, yeah. the jokes, the, the down low season before God puts you in the limelight. Mm-hmm. So for me, when I was working at Chick-fil-A, I'll never forget this day. I promise y'all, this is like my wake-up call. I'm working. <laughs> it's time to clock out. I'm trying to, I'm taking my apron off, everything. I'm dirty, like they got the milk wash on my arms and everything. I'm like, listen, it's time to get out of here. I'm tired. I'm already irritated. <laughs> Gotta get out of here. I go to clock out. Manager say, Clarence, where you going? So, yo, it's time to leave. <laughs> Look at the clock, brother. Listen, brother. It's time to go. 
He said, oh, nah, take the trash out first. I said, take the trash out? You're welling. <laughs> You're welling. <laughs> I go take the trash out. Why I go to take the trash out? I got the hairnet on, everything. <laughs> <laughs> I go to take the trash out, and my, during this time, I'm not driving. My aunt and my family, they're all coming to pick me up. Ironically, they want to pull up while I'm taking the trash out. <laughs> so they pull up in the truck. Marlon, Amaya, Smiley, Ambarita, Kaylin, all them all in the Name truck. Name drop is crazy. <laughs> all, all, them, all them in the car. I'm pushing the, the whole trash bin. While I'm pushing the trash bin, all I see is a truck coming by, by my side. All the windows roll down. All them start laughing. I was like, nah, this is not it, bro. Like, I, don't, I was heated. I was like, bro. <laughs> I was like, bro, I'm over here trying to get my money and everything. I, I have a hairnet on, and the arms dirty. I'm dumping trash. They got me, I'm a trash boy right now. Like, this is crazy. But... Even in that, we have to realize that we can't let every little thing that may hurt our feelings or make us feel insecure or make us feel like we're not good enough deter us from actually serving in purpose mm -hmm. still right. and learn what we need to learn. Because you'll go through that season of, dang, I don't like how that made me feel. I'm going to leave. That's it. Yeah. And you'll miss your blessing in, long, in the long run because you, you didn't want to steward that season. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to take the character development and the different things that God was trying to mold to you. People were laughing at me back then. That made me be stronger when, when it came to me speaking. When God said, I'm going to call you to speak, I know I talk fast. I know I stutter all that. But now I can turn the joke into a strength. Yeah. Uh, you feel me? So, like, now when, when we had, like, the little DJ re remix and jump, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I had stuttered on the podcast and everything. I had to, I told him, I said, matter of fact, instead of me being embarrassed about me stuttering, me, me. post this joke, make yeah. this joke a meme, because it's about to be content. Yeah. Make more people come. But it's more transparent. It makes people feel more a part of what we got going on. And right. also, they'll be able to see what God's actually doing within us. Yeah. So now, more people will be able to relate to God qualify him. He called him to speak, but he's not the best at speaking. But y'all see what the page is doing. Y'all yeah. right. see the rooms packed out. Y'all right. see we got people from Atlanta in the building. Yeah. Right. Like, that's crazy. Like, this different things that God's been doing off of our obedience step of starting the podcast, doing the Bible studies, bringing this community together. And I just want whoever's in here that's going through that season of, you in the down low, you in the dirt. You can't grow. What plant you know that's grown without the dirt? Right. <laughs> what, what plant y'all know? Right. It, it's even plants growing in different cracks that got this sl the slightest little bit of dirt. You be in the street, be like, how, do, how does grass grow in the street? <laughs> you got to be able to grow where you can. Right. You know what I'm saying? Wherever you at, you have to be able to try to grow where you can. Everybody's cars is built different, but... Whatever God gave you is all you need within that moment, so utilize it to the best of your ability. Because yeah. Dad always says it with Uno. It could be a person that got all the trick cards, and I got all numbers. Ironically, I have all numbers. Like, yeah. come on now, redo this. Nah, <laughs> God was like, I give you those numbers for a reason. Play in. Because it might be called for you to learn this a little bit earlier than they are. Mm -hmm. Just because I gave them all these capabilities and these skills out the gate earlier at an earlier age don't mean you're not as capable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just means you're called to use them in a different way. Mm -hmm. right. More strategy. It might yeah. More strategy, mm -hmm. more wisdom. All, you need to learn all this now because what I'm about to do for you later on it's going to be in a way bigger limelight when you get there versus how they are in the limelight now. You're going to surpass that. Yeah. So, again, for all y'all that's in here, make sure you're utilizing your, your isolation season, your wilderness, because that season is your character development. Yeah. It don't matter if God's taking you the long way. It don't matter if God's trying to delay, delay you in the process because, like the Israelites, they seen the promised land, but they had to go a long way to get there because if they would have went there early, they wouldn't have stewarded the, the promised land. Yeah. So it's a lot of us that's in the wilderness season because – we're not we're going the long way we have to go through the character development to make sure we steward what we have to uh what god's trying yeah. to bless us with so i just want to lead them with that real quick yeah no, that's good does anybody like, have yeah. any popcorn because i'm just sitting here like <laughs> yeah. this is great i'm, I'm just <laughs> I, I want i want everybody to uh i want to bring a, a scripture the, the holy spirit told me to say this so write this down if you're listening if you're studying colossians chapter 3 mm -hmm. verse 22 yep colossians chapter 3 verse 22 says, slaves, obey your earthly masters and everything and do it not only when their eye is on you and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not saying slaves like we got to dead this. OK, mm -hmm. everybody's on this. Well, the Bible's went by a white man and it was used to be able to abuse slaves. And uh, let's let's dead that. That's canceled. We just canceled it. <laughs> the Bible was written over thousands of years ago through time by Middle Eastern men who were of, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, I'm, oh my gosh, Arab, uh, Arab, of Arabic descent, mm -hmm. of Hebrew descent, of Greek descent, etc. It's called do your research, okay? 
So it wasn't just used as a tool. Now, was it used as a tool to enslave black people? Yes. Mm -hmm. It was manipulated. Why? Because Lucifer knows the word too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not stuck. I'm letting that cook. <laughs> Lucifer knows the word too. You can easily take God's word and manipulate it. Facts. Easily. Facts. You can make it be what you want it to be to make yourself feel good, which is pride, which is why Lucifer got kicked out of heaven, which is why he will burn in eternity. So slaves does not mean slaves whip on your back because you black. Slaves mean workers. Mm -hmm. Those who are of the diligence, those who are who are, are doing, obey your earthly masters in everything and do it not only when their eye is on you and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Verse 23, whatever you do, this is very key, everybody. Listen to me very, very, very intentionally. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Yeah. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there is no favoritism. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all of the conversation that we're in, and I'm, I'm, I hope we're about to like, migrate into the business, yeah. Yeah. because again, I know we talked about tactics earlier, and we're still a little philosoph philosophical, but let's start with the spirit, because that's the first foundation, mm -hmm. and then we're about to get busy. Like, Who's ready to get a bag? Hey, listen. If they not, I'm ready. You ready? You well in. Cause, they well in. Because again, if if you're still watching on on as you're watching this back, like please, like we I know we took the time to talk about what we've talked about so far, but we will give you the game. I promise you. Mm -hmm. Justin and I came with that intention in mind. You will walk away with tangible steps of what you can do to be able to start a business, grow a business, and or thrive in as an entrepreneur as somebody who wants to climb the corporate ladder. Okay, uh -huh. all right, because both are valuable. All right. OK, so let's start this foundation into the business segment of this conversation with this. That what you just heard through Colossians chapter three, verse 23 is the blueprint for any type of success that you want to achieve in your business or at your job. Why? Masters get paid the most. Mm -hmm. Write that down. Yeah. Masters get paid the most. Not people with master's degrees. I didn't say that. Because <laughs> I don't have one, and I make more than a lot of people that have them. <laughs> Just be very real that's with all you. That's all, brother. <laughs> master's degrees. I'm sorry. Ma uh, master's. <laughs> 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 master's get paid the most. What does that mean? Masters do it because they love it. Mm -hmm. Masters do it because they get rewarded from the feeling of when they're done it and they look back at it and they feel like it was to the satisfaction that made them feel comfortable with releasing it to the world. Masters, in the context of us as kingdom citizens, are those who work so diligently and so long and so many hard hours because they know that God is watching and they just want him to be pleased because they honor the gift that he has given them. That's a master. So that's why he's encouraging us. He's saying, yo, do every single thing that you're doing on, as service rendered unto the Lord. Why? Because he's watching you. Mm -hmm. Very key. Everything that we're doing in this life is not for the experiences alone of the earthly manifestation. Mm -hmm. It is a heavenly bank account that you are uh, creating um, interest in that you will receive the return on that investment when we do get to glory and in certain aspects, living out the fulfillment of your purpose with joy and with excitement. Y'all see how vibrant we are and how we just vibing and everything's yeah. a vibe. That's because we love this. Yeah. I love pouring into you guys. Like this is, I've dreamed to be able to be in this type of a position. Mm -hmm. This is the Lord answering prayer. Mm -hmm. I love this. So the work that we're doing as we were up till 1.30 here at the studio building out the set, shout out to Natural. Everybody give a hand to Natural for creatively directing this entire experience. We were doing it because we love it. We're going back and forth about plants placement and all, like, cause we, listen, I love it. Masters get paid the most. What can you focus on 
and the skill set that you've been given to master your craft and put in the 10,000 hours necessary so that you can call yourself a master, so that you can command the price point. Like when I'm going places and they compensate me for what I am asking for and also commanding, it's because they understand we don't have to have any issues. I'm very blessed to be able to say this. North 13th, through the agency side of our business, which is called 13th and Create, we have a 90% retention rate with our clients. Jesus Christ. 90. That was an affirmation that I spoke years ago. They come back because they know that they can't get the experience as well as the quality of work that we provide every single time. So we are intentional about building very purposeful relationships, showing up and giving them the experience that they can't deny. One of the things that CL just talked about was that at Chick-fil-A, he learned that experience, the customer experience, the, the, the my pleasures, all of these different things, they all matter. So it's not just about the work and the skill set that you're developing, but how can you make the client and or the customer and or your boss or your management team or your SVPs or your C-suite feel so comfortable with you that they can rely on you. They can depend on you. I love texting my partners the night before an event that they're about to have when it's 2,000 people about to show up, 20,000 people that's about to show up, whatever the, the number is. And I'm like, yo, we got this. You feeling good? They're like, yeah, we feeling good. And then I'm like, you know I got your back, right? And they're like, that is one thing I know more than anything else. And let me tell you something, no shade, but this is coming from white people. This is coming from CROs of companies, C-levels, working directly with the biggest brands in the world that make billions of dollars and hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm talking Apple clients. Or they're, they're, those are their types of clients. Beats by Dre, like State Farm. like That's coming from them. So they understand quality assurance because of the time that has been taken to develop the skill of mastery. My lane of mastery, and this is so good because now we can start getting into the one thing. My lane of mastery is storytelling. That's what I do. And I do it at the best and highest level in the world. I say that with a confidence inside of me, not with Jaleel's cockiness. Mm -hmm. Storytelling was what I focused on. I have spent hours and hours and hours. The amount of time that many of you guys have probably spent consuming Shade Room and Spiritual Word and all that kind of stuff, I've spent on storytelling. Pixar, Disney. Apple, Nike, the best storytellers in the world. Because one thing that you're going to learn about storytelling is this. It's never about the product that's being sold, the hat that you have, the shoes that you're wearing, whatever it is. Like, it's never about that. It's about the story that you're being told of what that product or what that service is going to give you or do for you. Mm -hmm. So I focused on that because I was like, well, that's, that to me is where the, the big bucks are being made. That's where millions of dollars are being made because people have mastered that skill set. So in all of my attempts, and Justin will tell you, because I'm gonna keep it a buck with y'all, of wanting to start new business ideas, hmm. wanting to start a, a clothing brand. I'm so ready for 13th and Fashion. Oh my God, oh I, oh, I can't wait. But every time I'm about to start it, Justin's like, but have you been the good steward over 13th and Create within North 13th yet? Have you focused on scaling the core business and getting that sweet enough and building an audience and doing everything that you need to do so that then there's a demand yeah. for 13th and fashion? That was patience. That was sacrifice of ego and pride. And that also was God honoring it because he said, what I need you to do right now is I need you to be like Joshua, I'm excuse me, uh, like, like Caleb and, and the, and the uh, guys that were with him. Go into the promised land, see what it's hitting for, come back to the crib and let them know, yo, it's sweet. We got this. Let's go get it. <laughs> Yes, sir. Mm. So we're in the marketplace cultivating and developing relationships so that we can now subdue the mountain and make it bow to the authority of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. We're representation. We are ambassadors of the kingdom in these spaces. The wealth of the wicked is laid up in store for the just. So that is what you have to do. Focus on developing the skill sets and mastering it and focusing on the one thing. Yeah. JP. Ooh. <laughs> I want I want y'all to ask you know whatever you feel like everyone yeah. needs so that we could you know what I mean yeah so it's crazy you said the one thing because that's what was on my mind because 
I know we talked off camera about being multi-talented. I know it's a lot of people in the room that have so many different talents. They've started multiple businesses. I want to do this. I want to sell this. I want y'all to just talk about how did you narrow down this is what I am going to master. Right. Yeah, so. Yeah, so one of the biggest struggles that I see new entrepreneurs have is that they try to do everything all at once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what you'll find is it's an old quote. It's like, he who chases two rabbits catches none. Yeah. So yeah. I want you to really, like, really just think about that because when I, it brought me so much pain, bro, just trying to do all these things at once because this is what you typically think. And I was telling them this last night. You think that, oh, I start this business, I'm getting a little bit of money, I'm doing my thing. Okay, cool. I need to add this product, that product, this business, whatever, because I'm going to make four times as much money. Mm -hmm. But what actually happens is that you give a percentage of your brain power to these other things. Yeah. And then now the main business has 25% of your brain power. Yeah. And then the other ones all get 25%. So you make the exact same amount of money, but within four <laughs> different businesses. And the only thing that changes is you're four times the stress now. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So what I had to realize is that you have to focus on one thing mm -hmm. because there's someone else out there that is only focusing on one particular thing and one goal, one vision, and we are audacious enough to think that we can focus on four and then beat that person that's yeah, focusing that's on true. one thing only mm -hmm. alone. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. So um, quick story on that was I was sleeping, then woke up, and I just looked at my life, and I was like, bro, why am I so stressed? Like, I'm making money. I'm doing my thing. What's going on? And then I realized, I'm like, damn, it's because I got too much going on. I'm, I'm having a brand, and I told y'all last night, the brand was doing well, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, we were doing five, dollars $600,000 a month. Then, also, I'm trying to start my own personal brand. That's doing fifty, dollars $100,000 a month. Then, I'm trying to invest in crypto, real estate. I'm trying to be a man and work out. <laughs> like, I'm trying to do all of this stuff. Yeah. Like, something, something gotta give. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, the biggest decision that changed my life was I eliminated everything except for one thing. Mm -hmm. And I put all of my focus into it. But the way that you have to think about it, in my opinion, is is you have to sequence them all out properly. So don't think that just because like they always say like it's not denied it's just delayed, it's delayed you know yeah. so mm -hmm. you can have this big goal and vision for yourself and it can be here but if you try to, to do everything that would get you this goal at one time you never get the goal yeah. Yeah. so i look at it like becoming a president you got to be 35 you got to be a senator you got to be x y and z there's mm -hmm. prerequisites that's to good. get to the goal that you want that's good so you have to do them in order so what i did was to answer your question tactically is number one you got to look at all the things that you do and see which one has the most leverage mm -hmm. which one has the most leverage and how do you identify leverage number one is is the person that you're targeting, you're selling the service to, are they easy to target? Can you easily find them? Number two is, is this business model growing year over year, not dying? Mm -hmm. Number three, does this business solve a pain point for the specific group of people? Mm -hmm. um, so those are three. And then do they have the money to afford the service? Yeah. Because if you're teaching people how to build a resume to go get a job, they don't have the money to pay you for the service. Mm -hmm. So you have to target the right person. So you look at all of the things that you're trying to do and then you pick which one has the most leverage. And then if you can't even identify that, what helped me and freed me was I said, okay, which one that if I did this thing, would I feel comfortable at the end when I die? And just being like, bro, yeah. at least I gave it my all, bro. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Because if you can't choose, you just pick one and you might not be you might not make the most money, but at least you choose you chose what you thought was going to benefit the most people. Mm -hmm. And you can die knowing that, like, at least I tried good, to help yeah. the most people. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I just want to leave you all with that. It's like you got to choose one, because if you don't, then you won't be able to do any mm -hmm. of them. And um, number two is like just pick the one that has the most leverage. Yeah. And if you can't figure out what leverage is, just pick what you think is going to impact the most people and then focus only on that for bare minimum 12 months. Because this is what happens. You work on it for six months. It don't get you the revenue that you want. And then you go try the next new yeah. thing. Then, hey boy. <laughs> but you never stay in the game long enough to get good enough to actually be mm -hmm. a master at the craft. Yeah. The only reason that I'm here is because I've been doing the same thing for 13 years straight. Mm. One thing. 13 years. And then everything changed in one year. Jesus. So um last thing i'll say is that is the same thing that happened with like social media i was trying to everybody tells you you need seven streams of income 
right? <laughs> <laughs> they tell you post on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then you wonder why you burnt out. Yeah. It's because you haven't been focusing on one thing to get a good enough audience or a big enough audience or a big enough revenue stream to be able to diversify. And, um, you know, what I've realized is that wealth is made through concentration and it's maintained through diversification. Mm -hmm. So you concentrate long enough until you have enough money to then diversify. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope y'all wrote that down. That was Facts. OD. Don't let that go over your head. <laughs> let's let's keep digging can we keep going yeah is this good are y'all still with us yes sir okay all right so when you're focusing on that one thing there's three areas in which you want to differentiate yourself in the marketplace okay one of three or a combination of a couple of them number one it was really no specific order but it's just this is the first one i'm gonna say quality are you the most quality with what it is that you provide? Speed is number two. Can you do it faster than anyone else? Can you do it faster than anyone else? Third, price point. Are you the most affordable option within everybody else? If you're focusing on one of those three, or all of those three, that's how you will differentiate yourself in the marketplace. Zara, it is of a certain quality, but it's what? Affordable. Mm -hmm. It's called fast fashion. So it's affordable, so people will, will, will go and consume it regularly. Now, Louis Vuitton, right? Or Gucci or, or Prada or all these things, right? What is their focus? Quality. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're charging thousands of dollars for one specific product. Exclusivity is another thing that they're thinking about. Why? Because what's this season is not gonna be next season. So when you get this one bag right now, you're gonna get it right now and then you'll be one of the few that ever have it. That's the story that they're telling you, right? Affordable option, or excuse me, fastest. This is crazy, and it's kind of messed up. Was well, very messed up, but in America, we've literally settled for quality of food for the idea of convenience. Mm. So we'll go to McDonald's or Burger King or Chick Fil A or whatever it is over going to something that's like a Whole Foods or, or something that's holistic because I ain't got the time. Mm -hmm. So now, if I can get it fast, boom. So where is the specific areas and concentrations of what your business is? Or again, because you can also be an entrepreneur, that you can diversify your skill set in such a way and where now people can rely on you as one of these things or, or one of these three things or a mixture or a combination of these different elements. Mm -hmm. The next thing I want to talk about is the entrepreneur really quickly, okay? Entrepreneurs are also just as valuable as entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. There are people, like, I want to give you guys a name that I want you to, got, you, you to go study, okay? Bob Iger. Okay? Bob Iger. For all of the fellas. All right? A lady that I want you guys to look at that may be a little bit more real and tangible, et cetera, is the name Dia Sims. Dia Sims. Okay? Two different uh, executives within the idea of the media landscape, entertainment, et cetera. Bob Iger is the CEO of the Walt Disney Company. Is he Walt Disney? No. But is he noted, noted as one of the greatest CEOs of all time? Yes. Quick little gem. Being a CEO is not as cool as you think it is. Not saying that I'm trying to degrade Bob Iger because he's an incredible businessman, but we carry this title of CEO in our community thinking that, oh, I just want to be a CEO, I just want to be a CEO, and we give it glory, we, we praise it. He's like, no, I'm a CEO. No, 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 listen to what you're saying. I'm the chief executive officer. That is the highest ranking employee position within a corporate infrastructure. Mm. There's a difference between a founder, a chairman, and a CEO. A CEO answers to the founder or the chairman. There's a difference. So, Bob Iger said, I see what Walt Disney's vision was, 
I see my lane of opportunity. And what I'm going to do is focus on making the Walt Disney Company the greatest entertainment media platform in the world. And he successfully accomplished it. Mm -hmm. If you go and do the research on what he did to even help the company rebound from a 20-year deficit that happened within the, uh, the company because of Walt Disney's death and mismanagement of corporate you know, leadership that came after the fact, it's incredible what he's done. He's great in his own right. He was on the cover of Time Magazine. There's nothing wrong with being an entrepreneur. You may be called from God to carry out an assignment in which you are the support of someone else's vision. You have to be comfortable with that. Yeah. You have to be okay with that. And you got to be confident in that yeah. because mm -hmm. that is also needed. You can't build a vision like More Purpose, the, the platform in which this is going to scale to a billion dollar company. Yes, Lord. So, yes, yes, Lord. Lord. They won't hey, lit. Hey, they won't even lit. They won't even lit. They ain't hear you. They ain't hear you. You won't scale to that level unless you can have a Bob Iger on your team. Mm -hmm. Ladies, I'm going to make it real for you, Dia Sims. Dia Sims was the head of uh, Sean Diddy Combs' infrastructure for years. She started off as his assistant, ended up becoming the CEO of the company. That was her journey. She black and brown just like y'all. So I want you guys to understand that there's nothing wrong with being a quote-unquote number two. Number two is still a number. <laughs> it's just the position in which you're servicing the role of the vision. It's not about the person and the title. It's about the vision. You have to follow the vision. You have to attach yourself to a vision. What you will do is fry yourself thinking you're an entrepreneur, but you're not built for it. Mm. Hear what I'm saying. You're not built for it. You weren't designed to yeah. be an entrepreneur. Yeah. You were designed to be an entrepreneur. You were designed to be somebody that's in support of someone else's vision. Mm. That's okay. That's deep. It's good. Yeah. Facts. So, I mean, uh, I know they're talking about time and stuff like that, but like y'all, y'all let us know what y'all want to do. I'm mean, we here. Like, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> That's I want you to yeah, I about to say That's I want you to kind of go a little bit deeper into that as far as playing your role um, in that aspect and with playing a role as far as partnership, especially in the business side and how everything that we do requires partnership. I know everything you do, you had to link up with somebody else. Y'all two linked up, so just talk to me about a uh, partnership because a lot of people think I got to be the number one, I got to get it on my own, but you need people, so. Mm -hmm. Number one thing that people make the mistake of, and it can work out sometimes really well, and then sometimes it doesn't work out at all. I got this vision. All right, bet. This is going to be huge. This is the business idea I got. All right, thank you, Lord, for the vision. All right, here's what I'm going to do. First step. Do -do 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 -do. FaceTime. Best friend. Hey, yo, I got this vision. We about to get rich. On me. <laughs> Did God say that that person was supposed to be the person that was supposed to support you as your number two or your partner to be able to help you build the business? Or do you feel like that person is actually qualified to be in the mm -hmm. role? I want you to write something down. This is going to really sting, Let's but I promise you it's needed. Ready for this? Bomb coming. Loyalty and capability are two different things. Two. What? <laughs> <laughs> Just because somebody is loyal to your vision doesn't mean that they're the capable yeah. or qualified person mm -hmm. to rock with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To help you to build the vision that God's called you to build. Mm -hmm. So don't allow yourself to be discouraged by the lack of enthusiasm that your best friend is showing you because they're not supporting the vision that you told them about and they're not showing up to the meetings on time and they're not showing up to the, to the, to the, uh, to the projects on time or mm -hmm. they're not giving you the passion or enthusiasm because they may not be the person yeah. that God wants you to be in partnership with to help to scale the thing to the next level. It's real, real. I love the fact that you're loyal and I appreciate that. We dogs for life. Yeah. <laughs> but the business got to be straight. Because at the end of the day, we have committed to a mission. That is why every single business needs to start with the foundation of a mission statement. 
we exist as North 13th to empower all people to reach the highest level of self-sufficiency and obtain the highest quality of life through storytelling. That's what we do. That's our corporate purpose. Everyone who is aligned with that in my company, all is here because of that vision. Not Jaleel, not his enthusiasm, the vision. So if you are not aligned with someone who sees that vision, carries that vision, is burning with that vision, is passionate about that vision, is creating ideas with you, is taking initiative. Oh, my God. Yeah. The thing that burns me up the most is when people are around you not taking initiative. Yeah. Yeah. It will frustrate you to the point where you... <laughs> it will frustrate people around you not serving the vision of what God has placed in your heart will burn you so much to the point where you will forfeit the calling because they're not in alignment with what you uh, are doing. Mm -hmm. And now you are now in, in, in accountability to God for something that you were supposed to do. And he's looking at you like, that was your fault. Because I never told you to align yourself with that person. Mm -hmm. You thought it was a good idea. And it was a good idea in theory and for your heart. But not in the actual practicality. Yeah. The reason why Justin is my partner and the reason why I'm Justin's partner is because we see value in each other and we both know that we can hold each other's weight. Mm -hmm. Justin sauces me up with plays every single day. I bring value to Justin every single day. Two days ago, just before we got here, made an introduction to a billionaire for him. Wow. I'm not going to let that just go over your head. Yeah, like, say, hey, two out. days ago, I just made an introduction to a billionaire for Justin, that's value. It's not my best friend and my boy. Okay, yes, I, I love him, but if I knew he could not deliver on mm -hmm. what it is that I introduced him to the billionaire for, mm -hmm. I would not be able to, to, to stand on my own integrity and have credibility in the eyes of the billionaire anymore. Yeah. I just fried a billion dollar relationship. Mm -hmm. Watch this. I just fried my assignment from God. <laughs> the wealth of the wicked is laid up in store for the what? Just. Yes. He like, go get that bag for me, son. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I can't fry my credibility. I got to make sure that the people around me are qualified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the vice versa. Also brand. We're sitting here on this platform together. If I didn't have a solid brand, Justin wouldn't be sitting next to me. Yeah. If, okay, I'm going to take it a step further. If More Purpose didn't have a qualified platform, Justin would not be sitting next to me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's real. I would not be sitting here. Because I can't associate myself with people or for, with things that do not represent what the brand that I've built stands for. Mm -hmm. Credibility matters. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand all of these different mechanics when you're going into the context of partnership. Slow your roll. Me and Justin were supposed to launch a podcast earlier this year. We had literally a partnership with a major corporation that all of you know and all of you use probably daily. We went into the relationship the wrong way we had to take a year to wait and say let's get this sweet let's come up with more clear terms of understanding as to what you're expecting from me and what i'm expecting from you because i'm not going to let the relationship end with me losing my brother mm -hmm. because of business but i'm also not going to fry the business because i'm in a relationship with my brother mm -hmm. so how do we make both of these worlds work and that is how you want to address partnership are you the most qualified person for this vision? Do you understand the core values of this mission? Are you die, ready to die for what it is that we believe in? Are you ready to sleep, eat, breathe this and go hard for this because our name and our reputation and our accountability to God is on the line? Mm. If you cannot meet these things, then we cannot go into business together because it just does not make sense. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. You, good. Um, you know, just tactically speaking, my mentor told me is like, you want to make sure that you find three things in your partner. And I was sharing this with y'all last night. Mm -hmm. It's like, number one, you're aligned on the vision. That's what Jaleel's talking about now. The next thing is that you're aligned with your morals, work ethic, virtues, values, etc. And then lastly, that you live a similar day to day lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So you have the same vision, you're going the same place. You want to get there the same way, values, and then also you have a similar day-to-day -day lifestyle because if you know Marlon want to get a Lambo, 
you know, and then CL want to get the Prius, there's going to be a clash. <laughs> there's going to be a clash somewhere. Um, and, you, and I've seen it happen, you know, too many times. So make sure that if you're aligning yourself with anybody, you have the same vision, the same values, um, and you have a similar day-to-day -day lifestyle. Yeah. How do we wake up today, Justin? What do we do? Oh, yeah. Went to the gym. Yeah, prayed, went to the gym. Ate breakfast. Thursday. Talked about last night, went over the game plan. He woke up this morning writing out all of his notes of what he wanted to do. It's alignment. Some good notes. I said, yo, let's go to the gym. He didn't say, I don't know, bro. My man had flip-flops. <laughs> he didn't even have all the gear that he needed to go to the gym. But because we held a standard, bro, I'm in covenant with this man. I'm not in, in promise. I'm not in goodwill. I'm in covenant with Justin. It's deeper. I made a vow to him, bro, this is what I'm working on for myself because I know I need to get this sweet. And so now as his accountability partner and now as his my accountability partner, we have to get this done. This is a part of it. That's the other thing we need to talk about, y'all. I know y'all love y'all wing stops and y'all and y'all uh, five guys and and y'all I like I get it, I get it. But we gotta take care of ourselves. You're currently at the age right now that if you make the right corrections, you won't end up with the chronicle diseases that we get plagued with as Black people for so long in our history. Mm -hmm. Diabetes, high blood pressure. That stuff is not things that's just passed down genetically mm -hmm. alone. It's habits. It's habits. You can't fulfill the vision of what God wants you to do if you don't take care of the temple that he gave you. Yeah. Yeah. So why are we up and at the gym? Because we know we need to start the day off with strength, power. Why are we eating the way that we're eating? He's eating fruit. I'm eating an omelet with spinach and mushrooms and all. Because I'm taking care of the temple. So that we can be efficient for what we got to do. Y'all women. <laughs> Y'all women. I'm ready to go like three more hours. Like I just got, I'm ready to go. Oh, like. no. Nah, we we going to get to all that. And trust, y'all be able to ask questions as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah and we're probably going to just wrap it up right here because I'm not, that's a lot for them to digest. I'm going to let, let, let that marinate on them and everything. And get What's good, y'all? It's your boy Marlon. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you're still here, like this video. Comment on this video at whatever gyms you got. And also hit that bell so that you can be notified whenever we drop a video. Next week, we have another banger coming for y'all. And we just appreciate y'all. Love.